Hi everyone, so we're going to continue where we left off in our solar system formation notes. So today we're going to talk about planet formation and kind of just what we expect to see with planets, some commonalities with those. So when talking about planet formation in the videos that we've seen, um, so within the disk that surrounds that proto sun that we can see right here. Oops, sorry. Around that disk, we have um, solid grains that collide and clump together to form planetismals. And our terrestrial planets, which we're going to define in a minute, are built of those collisions of those planetismals. And those come together by that gravitational attraction here. Where Jovian planets are formed by gas. Uh, accretion. So when we talk about terrestrial planets, we're really going to talk about rock planets here. And Jovian planets are gas planets. And remember those rock planets are made out of those planetismals and gas planets obviously are made out of gas. Okay. So here we just see a really nice um, image of the difference between some gas um, or I'm sorry some rock planets and some gas planets. And here's just some computer simulations. So um, as we go along, as time elapses, you see that these uh, planetismals that are colliding together create these more solid beings here, which are creating those um, planets. So after a long period of time, the more collisions that happen, the more um, condensed we're going to see. So at this point in time, our four planets aren't going to crash into each other anymore because we've made a solid orbit. But um, in the past, you can see all these blue lines are overlapping here, and that causes those collisions because there aren't one set orbit, unlike what we see here is that these lines don't overlap at all. So there's not going to be any collision there. So some common properties that we're going to talk about are planets. So um, talking a little bit about their orbits, all of our planets um, do not overlap here, except a little bit Pluto. But as we know, Pluto has been deemed not a planet anymore, it is an ice dwarf planet. But as you can see here, if we look at this side view right here, all of the planets kind of line up very nicely um, to form that disk in our solar system. Unlike Pluto, where it's off by a huge angle over here, um, which it could be another indicator of why Pluto is not considered a planet in our solar system. But um, it's really cool to see how these our planets have lined up almost completely flat um, in a disk as we orbit the sun. And it's important to note here, too, that all of our planets orbiting the sun move in a counterclockwise direction. OK. So some more things that all of our planets and moons um, have no appreciable atmosphere that will show scars from impact with planetary debris. Um, so our moons here will have craters from those different impacts throughout history. Um, so that's just another thing to note here. Um, yeah. Some of the debris in our solar system that we're going to see are asteroids. So asteroids are um, rocky bodies several kilometers across, so they're very large rocks that we're going to find, and they're mainly in that asteroid belt that's located between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, even smaller rocks are called meteorites, so they're slightly different, but they're also scattered throughout our solar system, unlike asteroids, which are going to be mainly found between um, Mars and Jupiter in that asteroid belt. So billions of chunks of rocks and comets are located beyond 
um, the orbit of Neptune, and those have a very special name to it. So occasionally one of these will be pulled from the inner, uh, pulled toward the inner solar system and form tails um, that close that orbit the sun. That's why when we talk about comets or you see comets in the sky, they have that tail and they orbit the sun just like anything else, which is why we see them sometimes in our orbit. So you only see Halley's Comet, I think it's 57, uh, every 57 years or something like that. So if we're talking about where we are in relation to us. So if you look at this nice diagram, you can see a bunch of different things that we're going to see. So our sun is obviously right here in the center. And then we move to our terrestrial planets. So our terrestrial planets are going to be Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Then we come out further and we see our asteroid belt. And then we're going to start with our Jovian planets. So those Jovian planets are going to be Jupiter, um, Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn. Those are going to be our Jovian planets. And then even further out beyond um, Neptune, we're going to see our um, Cooper belt. And then even further out from there, an Oort cloud. So when we're talking about our Kuiper belt, uh, it's classes of icy bodies orbiting beyond Neptune. They're only found in the outer solar system, so right out behind there. And our densities here are going to be pretty low. So it's uh, 0.1 to 2 grams. So in, and it's mostly ice out there. So examples of this are those icy dwarf planets. So Pluto, Eris, um, other uh, Kuiper belt objects, um, Pluto's moon, and just large distant ice bodies that are found out there. So you can see here right on beyond Neptune over here, we have that belt of those icy objects. Let me see Pluto's included over there. So our Oort cloud is a spherical, spherical cloud of comets. So it extends out almost 50,000 um, AU, so almost a light year away, and it contains trillions of comets. Um, it's on the outer edge, farthest reach of our gravitational pull, our sun's gra gravitational pull, and there's no confirmed observations of this Oort cloud. Um, so its existence is only theoretical at this point, um, but we know that it's way, way out there containing of those trillions of comets. That is the predictions that are put out there. So if we look even further out, we can see just all of these is what is believed to be that Oort cloud. So kind of like leftovers, other things that we are going to find in our uh, solar system are those asteroids again. Um, those are made of rock metal. They have really varied in size, our asteroids here, um, but they're mainly found again in that main belt, our asteroid belt. Our meteorites are very small. Um, comparative to the asteroids, they would be like a grain of sand compared to those boulders. And they're just bits again of rock and metal where comets have a slightly different composition um, of rock and ice. So kind of think of it like dirty snowballs. And they have those long tails of gas and dust that are swept with them when they pass near the sun, which is why when we see them, they have those nice long tails. So there's some examples of some asteroids here. We can see these very large, large rocks, very condensed here. Even you can see some craters formed on these rocks from other um, asteroids coll collisions and with um, meteorites colliding with them as well. Here we can see kind of some comets and meteorites. You can see that tail there. 
right here. And then we can see a few more comets here, kind of looking like that snowball fixture, uh, figure like I mentioned earlier. Okay. So if we're looking to compare some planets here, the orbits of planets, so nearest the Sun, Earth, Venus, Mercury, Mars, um, are relatively close together. So we, those planets run really close to each other. And while our Jovian planets, our gas planets are more spread out. So they're not as close to each other where these four planets right here are relatively close to each other. And these are more spread out and further away from each other. Um, that also could do with the planet size as well. So most of the planets do orbit in those nearly circular and also on the same plane as we saw earlier. So when we're talking about planets, we talk about their size. So when we say size, we're looking at the physical volume of the planet. When we talk about mass, we're looking at the matter, the amount of matter in that object, so in that planet. And when we're looking at the density here, it's the amount of mass per unit volume. So that really depends on the composition. So our density of planets that are gas planets are going to see here are much lower than our planets that are made of rock because their mass is less because it is um, made of gas rather than rock which has more area to create that space, even though our diameter of Jupiter is much, much larger. As you can see here, our mass is so little that it causes our density to be smaller than other planets. OK, so again, just reiterating, there are two basic groups of planets. We have terrestrial. So these tend to be small in size low in mass, but high in density because of what they are made out of, mostly rock, and these are going to include Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, where our Jovian planets are large in size, very massive, but low in density because they are those gas planets, mostly made of gas, and those are going to be Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Okay, so that is where we're going to end today. Make sure we are taking these notes um, either in our class notebook or in some sort of notebook. I will be doing notebook checks um, very soon, so we want to be ready for those. Okay, I'll see you soon.